Welcome to another episode and today this is something that many of you may have in your home garage and that's a vacuum pump. Now these are terrific if you need to bleed brakes by yourself, test certain valves like an EGR valve. I showed recently on how you can check a solenoid valve using a vacuum pump. You can do a lot of nice things with this simple tool but there is something else you can use this for that can point you in the right direction. The whole point with today's video is maybe you have a problem, but you're not precisely sure what it is. In other words, maybe you have a vacuum leak around the intake manifold, or maybe on the cylinder heads or at the cylinder heads. Maybe you have a vacuum leak where the hoses are. So this tool, the vacuum pump, can help you diagnose precisely what's going on. Now, every modern vehicle, you will find a brake booster. That's this circular device on the firewall. And as you can see, we have a rubber line that runs off the booster directly into the intake manifold. So let's start by removing the line from the brake booster. That's how it works. It uses vacuum from the engine to help you brake more efficiently. So let's remove this line and we simply just have a clamp here. Now you see how this is properly solidified. You can't really take it off. So to help with this, to facilitate the removal, hose removal pliers. These are terrific as always. I'll list all of the tools and supplies below. If you happen to need anything, and you just twist it. You see how it breaks that free? This makes it super, super easy. If you don't have one of these, terrific set to have. You can even use a pick, place the pick underneath the rubber line and just break it free. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you as always for watching. If you're new here, consider checking out some other videos. The whole point here is really DIY, how you can do essentially almost anything at home and save thousands, thousands in the process. Okay, so now we're going to grab the vacuum pump. And of course, you always want to double check that it's working. So just place your thumb, make sure it holds vacuum. Okay, so let's plug it up. I'll plug it in here. I'm going to need an adapter, hold on. Just a little line along with an adapter and this will fit nicely into the hose here. I'll give you another shot here in a moment. You can even zip tie the end just to make sure you have a really nice connection. But let's give it a vacuum. Yeah, you see how it's holding? Okay, so this is a good connection. Now, before we start the vehicle, let me show you the hookup. So once again, this is just the rubber line from the intake that runs to the brake booster. It's hooked up. I have my adapter that comes with the kit along with a rubber line. This is also in the kit. And then look at the face plate here. I'm sorry, the bad, my uh, battery for the, for the light is sort of funking out here. Hold, let me actually do this. Let me turn this off. There we go. That's maybe a little bit better for this second. So look at the red. As you can see, we have what's known as KPA, which is kilopascals. So we want to see essentially a reading around minus 60 kilopascals, but the needle needs to be steady, okay? If it's jumping around or drop, dropping intermittently, we'll talk about that. Now make sure that the AC is off and the vehicle should be warmed up. Okay, let me show you the gauge. Okay, you see that? We're right a little bit more, minus 70. That's because the engine's a little bit cold. Let me place this back on the tripod. So this is precisely what you want to see. It's not jumping up and down the needle. It's not dropping intermittently, coming back up. We'll talk all about these in a moment. But if you think you have a problem going on with a vacuum leak, valve issues, and we'll talk all about this in a second, you can always check with a vacuum gauge. Something a lot of people just overlook. Hook up a vacuum gauge and see precisely what's going on. Steady needle. This is what you want to see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is give you this, hold on, this screenshot right now. And essentially it's a worksheet. It's a worksheet 
If you decide to do this simple test on your vehicle and you see that the needle is not steady or it's lower than where it needs to be, you can follow this guide and that will direct you toward the right place. This is old school. Old school works. This helps. Absolutely. But the check engine light is not always illuminated if you have a problem internally. Years ago, when COVID really started happening, these older Subarus, this is a 2010, they are known to have bed head gaskets over time, head gaskets. And at the time, the vehicle had like 110,000 miles, and I noticed some oil, as far as I could tell, was leaking from the head gasket. To verify that, I used the vacuum gauge. I saw precisely what was happening, and I knew immediately, okay, this thing needs head gaskets, and that's when I pulled the engine and I shot that whole series on how to do the repair at home. So again, old school works. It really, really does. If the needle is steady, but it's lower than the normal position. And as the vehicle warms up, that needle gets lower and lower. Then that's indicative of either the intake, the intake, typically the gasket leaks. Now this I did replace when I pulled the engine for the head gasket, crazy not to. So right here is the head, I'm sorry, the intake gasket. Here's another screenshot just showing what that looks like. Typically if you have an intake leak, you'll hear it. The car just won't run right, it's loud. You'll know if, if you have an intake leak. But you may have a pin size hole, a pin size vacuum line hole. Easy enough to test, simply remove it. Plug one end, you can use your finger to plug it or just tape it up. You can use a fastener to plug it, whatever you want to do. The other end, hook up your vacuum pump and see if it holds pressure. Even if you have a pin size hole, anyone familiar with EVAP leaks, if you have a pin size hole, the car won't run just the way it needs to, okay? So easy enough to do. Now the other three, I was about to say five, but the other three probably won't come across, but nonetheless, you can see if you have a sticky valve, you can see if you have weak or broken valve springs. Oh, a defective ignition system. Actually, that is something I showed a few years ago. This vehicle had a misfire on cylinder one, and I went over the steps on how I verified it wasn't the fuel injector, how I pinpointed it was one of the ignition wires and I also used the vacuum pump and the needle was a little bouncy because it, it, the vehicle was only running on three out of four cylinders. So use this to your advantage. The whole point here is we wrap this up, guys. The whole point here is to save you money. Bottom line, DIY. You do the work yourself, you save a ton. Now, even if you say, I don't have the time, I don't have the expertise to do the work, you can still diagnose it. And that way you're saving yourself paying 150, 160, 170 an hour to a shop to diagnose it. If you can diagnose it yourself, you're saving money. Plus you can verify that the guy you're using, the shop that you're using is honorable, that they're honest. There's a lot of scammers out there. So why not just double check? Take, if, if this is all new to you, take an hour out, take an hour and a half out with a buddy, Grab some nice cold drinks, go through it together, save some cash. You know, inflation is through the roof, do the work yourself. That's the whole point with this channel. It's like, I'm really trying to pound this in, but you can do the work yourself and save a lot of money. So as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.